Right now, Tom Pawkin is is back with us. It's been a while since Tom's been on the program. I uh, don't recall exactly how long, but Tom, great to have you back. Good to be with you, Tom. Tom Pawkin, his last name is spelled P-A-U-K-E-N. His website is TomPawkin.com. He's a former Reagan White House staff member, a uh, commissioner of the Texas Workforce Commission, and the author of Bringing America Home, How America Lost Her Way and How We Can Find Our Way Back. And uh, uh, Tom... Uh, David Frum, uh, we've we've had several conversations with him uh, over the last year or so, and you know, it seems it, it, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but uh, he and a number of other thoughtful conservatives have suggested that the Republican Party, the part of the Republican Party that calls itself severely conservative or or very conservative or libertarian conservative or Tea Party conservative, has just gone nuts. Uh, that this is not the kind of conservatives that Barry Goldwater recognized. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, David Frum is a neoconservative, and he was one of the architects from the sidelines of uh, of the Bush policy to uh, impose uh, democracy on the Middle East through uh, uh, through military interventionism, a very uh, ill-suited policy, which ironically has been continued uh, by the Obama administration, and I think our failures in the Middle East uh, during the Bush administration are principal reason why uh, he became very unpopular and uh, Barack Obama was elected president. But uh, quite frankly, under the Obama administration, you've got uh, Hillary Clinton with her Arab Spring policy, uh, which is indirectly uh, to uh, engage in regime change. I think we've made a heck of a mess in the Middle East, and we better start rethinking what we're doing over there and, and consider the law of unintended consequences when you get rid of governments and uh, impose uh, uh, new regimes that may be even worse. So I don't, I'm not a big fan of Frums generally because he is, he and Richard Pearl, in fact, authored, co authored a book. Uh, praising this idea that we're going to uh, impose U.S.-style democracy in the Middle East. Well, I don't want to hang this whole thing on David Frum. My, my, my point is, it seems to, and, 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 and frankly, I think that you and I probably agree on more with regard to Middle East policy and non-interventionism than we disagree, but uh, the, the, these guys who are talking about forcible rape and, and, and the, these guys who are, who are going off on how you know, on secession, we've got this conversation going on. You've got eight or nine members of of the uh, the state house up in uh, Wisconsin or Minnesota right now talking about arresting any federal officials who want to implement Obamacare and dare step foot in their state. I mean, well, this yeah, but, this but is the lunatic the, fringe the on steroids, problem, Tom. And that's why I think Frum doesn't get it at all. The real problem is uh, you've had in the post Reagan period nothing but what I would call Rockefeller style Republicans, Wall Street guys, private equity guys like Mitt Romney uh, being our nominees, or people beholden uh, to, if you will, the the big financial institutions yeah. and. And the problem is we've gotten away from our middle class base, and, and and we really need to move back to being concerned about what the average American is worried about. And, and you and I have talked on this program before about the need to bring manufacturing home to the U.S. Yep. and start growing the private sector and getting good-paying jobs back here, and, and we need to change the business tax system. Neither party right now is talking about that. They're all focused on this, you know, the personal income tax side, but the reality is the bigger problem is you've got a business tax system which rewards debt, which is great for the corporate uh, buyout the artists because they load companies yeah. up with debt and ship the jobs overseas, but it's terrible for uh, American businesses and, and workers. And yeah, so no, I, I, I agree with you on that. And in fact, I, you know, it, it sounds so often to me like, you know, when we have these conversations, and, and I believe I've said this overtly in the past, that uh, you're talking like my dad used to talk, who considered himself an, an, an Eisenhower, Eisenhower Republican. Yeah, friend. an Eisenhower Republican and a Goldwater conservative. Sure. And, and, and Goldwater and, used to say, our job is not to represent big business, big labor, or big government, but the forgotten Americans, the middle class taxpayers who don't have lobbyists in right. Washington and aren't looking for loopholes in the law. And we've gotten away from that. So let's talk, let's talk about this business tax. You, you have a, your, the most recent piece that you have up over at TomPawkin.com is called Taxing Our Way to Prosperity. And, you know, there's some, uh, respectfully, there, there's some of the gratuitous rhetoric about, oh, my God, taxes in there. But you get into this point that basically, uh, I would have gotten into it by starting out that Alexander Hamilton, you know, put tariffs on imported goods in 1793. And we 
built the United States. Our average tariff from, from 1795 until the mid-1980s in the United States, tariff on imported goods was, was a 31 or 30.5 percent, I think, it was the average of all those years. It went as low as 29 percent. It went as high as 42 percent. But it, it averaged around 30 percent. And, and, you know, Reagan and then Clinton and, and, and I mean, to this day, uh, uh, President Obama, now our average tariffs are, are well under 2 percent. And other countries, in response to joining the WTO and whatnot, you know, and getting on this whole global free trade thing, have said, okay, fine, we'll do away with tariffs, imp- taxes on imported goods too. But what we're going to do is put into place a value-added tax on anything manufactured, and we'll reverse that tax out on exports. So they be, so be, and, 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 but they, and, and we'll impose that tax on imports. So it functionally you're, becomes a tariff. You're absolutely right. I call it a stealth tariff, and I use the example of a a U.S.-made Cadillac shipped to Germany, a 35% corporate tax rate here, 7.65 employer portion of the payroll tax, price it at 50000 to compete against a Mercedes-Benz, you're hit at the German border with a 19% border-adjusted consumption tax. Right. They have, and so you're at a huge disadvantage, and on average we're at an 18% disadvantage with our trading competitors, and it's not just the low-wage nations. Uh, Germany has a very strong manufacturing sector, and yet it has a high wage and high social service cost uh, yeah. structure. So uh, that German vehicle coming into the U.S., we have no border-adjusted consumption tax, and as you point out, Tom, uh, they get a tax credit against their uh, business consumption tax back home. So I'm saying get rid of the existing system, put in a border-adjusted consumption tax in the 8 to 9% range. It would be whatever would be revenue neutral. Right. And uh, all of a sudden, you're leveling the playing field. I'm, I'm totally with you, Tom. We just have a minute left. No How longer do... rewarding debt. I, we just have a minute left. How do we get... Republicans and Democrats to talk about a VAT tax, about a value-added tax, or as well, you call it, a consumption tax. There are some Democrats. Fritz Hollings is talking about it. Uh, Paul Ryan's come out in favor, but he doesn't echo a word about it. Jim DeMint is in favor of it. Pat Choate, an independent who ran with uh, Ross Perot, has endorsed yeah, okay. it. Uh, I think Erskine Bowles came out for it the other day, as did Paul O'Neill, who was Secretary of Treasury and fired... I think by Dick Cheney because he warned about the deficit levels. Right. Uh, but they're all in favor of this concept, so I think it's gra- gaining ground. And this is one where Tom, I think, business and labor can come together, and people on the left and right can come together. I agree. And, I mean, I just hate to see that neither side up there is talking about this thing right yeah. now. And I- this is an opportunity to really bring people together and start bringing the jobs home to America. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree.